We've learned earlier that accounts receivable are amounts that are owed by a company's customers. Companies are also customers to their suppliers, so they can also owe their suppliers payments, which we call accounts payable. Obviously, a company cannot owe on its supplier payments indefinitely. For example, if the supplier extends net 60 terms to the company, the payment is due 60 days from the invoice date. Trade credit is the term used to describe such short-term credit from the suppliers to its customers and can be regarded as a form of interest-free loan. Management of accounts payable involves not just the negotiation of such credit terms with suppliers, but also the scheduling of the payments. If the company pays its payables prior to their due dates, cash is used unnecessarily and interest on it is sacrificed. If a company is late on payments, a late charge can be imposed with heavy interest rates. If this happens often, it can damage relationships with the suppliers and lead to more restrictive credit terms, or even require immediate cash as payment. And to complicate things, some suppliers encourage early repayment by giving a discount for early payment. For example, a 210 net 60 term means that the payment is due in 60 days, but a 2% discount is applied if the payment is made within 10 days from the invoice date. So now the company has a dilemma. Pay early and enjoy the 2% discount or stretch the payment until the 60th day. Thankfully, there's a systematic approach to determine which is the better option for the firm. If we make the discounted payment as the base, we can see it as 0% interest for the first 10 days. After 10 days, the full payment is required, so we can see the discount as an interest to be paid. The percentage interest is the discount divided by 1 minus the discount. If we annualize this interest, this can be viewed as the cost of trade credit to the firm. So here, we see the cost of trade credit as the interest rate that the firm pays for up to 50 days after the discount period. As this interest amount is fixed for up to the due date, the interest rate is minimized when the payment is stretched until the due date. Let's determine the cost of trade credit for the firm if it chooses to pay on the 60th day. The discount is 2% and the number of days past discount is 50. We get an annualized cost of trade credit of 15.9%. This means that the firm is effectively paying 15.9% annualized interest if it chooses to forego the discount and stretch the payment till the due date. So back to the question, should the company pay up early to enjoy the discount? The answer depends very much on the interest rate that the company can take a short-term loan for. If, for example, a bank offers a 50-day line of credit to the company for 13% interest, the company should take the bank loan and use the proceeds to pay the supplier on the 10th day. Otherwise, it should pay in full on the 60th day and finance the amount using trade credit. Let's work on an example. SaleCorp has a trade credit term of 1.5 slash 8 net 45 with a supplier. Determine if the company should pay up early if it has access to short-term credit at an annualized interest rate of 18%. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. Our first step is to calculate the cost of trade credit of the company if it chooses to pay on the due date. Discount is 1.5% and the number of days past discount is 37. Plug these figures into the cost of trade credit formula and we get 16.1%, which is less than the 18% interest rate offered by other short-term credit. Since the cost is lower than what the company would pay if it obtained short-term credit elsewhere, it should not pay off early for the discount. Rather, it should delay the payment until the due date. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.